Cameroon's military has moved over 300 civilians rescued from Boko Haram terrorist captivity along the Central African state's border with Nigeria and Chad this week to a northern Cameroon military post. The country's army says scores of militants of the Nigeria-based insurgent group were neutralized in a border operation called Alpha. Moki Edwin Kenzeka reports from Yaoundé, Cameroon. Thirty-seven-year-old Omar Fatimi tells Cameroon military and senior government officials that she was a successful vegetable farmer in Gubwa village until April 17, when heavily armed Boko Haram fighters abducted her and three of her family members. Ngoboa is a village in Chad located near the northeastern shore of Lake Chad, a water body shared by Nigeria, Cameroon, Chad, and Niger. Fatimi said the abductors took her and several dozen civilians to a bush area near Lake Chad and threatened to kill them if their families failed to pay ransom. Fatimi is one of over 300 civilians Cameroon's military says were rescued from Boko Haram captivity in several villages along the Central African state's border with Chad and Nigeria within the past seven days. The Cameroon military said most of the freed hostages are women and children. About 200 government troops carried out the rescue operation. Mijiyawa Bakari is the governor of Cameroon's far north region that shares a border with Chad and Nigeria. La récolte a été fructueuse parce qu'ils ont mis la main sur les hauts de la loi. Bakari says Cameroon President Paul Biya dispatched him to the Banga Monday to congratulate the troops that carried out the very successful rescue operation called Alpha. He says government troops seized several hundred weapons, including rifles and explosives, along with motorcycles and bicycles militants were using to attack communities and kidnap civilians for ransom. Cameroon's military says it was assisted in assaults on some Boko Haram strongholds in border localities by government troops from Chad and Nigeria. Scores of militants were killed and several dozen wounded in the operation that lasted one week, according to Cameroon officials. Cameroon says militants who surrendered are helping troops in investigations but gave no further details. VOA could not independently verify if Cameroon carried out joint border military operations with troops from Nigeria and Chad. Cameroon says it is in negotiations with its neighbors to allow the rescued civilians who are Chadians and Nigerians to return to their communities voluntarily. Cameroon military says while waiting, the freed hostages will be taken to the Center for Disarmament, Demobilization and Reintegration, or DDR, in Mary, a northern town near the border with Chad and Nigeria, but did not say when. The three countries say Boko Haram is recruiting new militants and attacking villages for supplies. At least 36,000 people have been killed and 3 million have fled their homes since 2009, when fighting between Nigerian government troops and Boko Haram militants spread to Cameroon, Niger, and Chad, according to the United Nations. Moki Edwin Kinzuka, VOA News, Yaoundé. Cameroon. The U.S. Embassy in Tanzania has closed for two days because of an internet outrage which hit East African countries on Sunday. Due to the degraded network service nationwide, the embassy will remain closed to the public, the embassy said on an X post on Monday. Consular appointments for Tuesday and Wednesday were cancelled and revoked for a later date. The embassy said it would remain accessible for handling emergency cases involving American citizens and visa collections. Businesses and homes in Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda and seven other countries are experiencing slow internet speeds following a cut on deep sea fiber cables at Mutunzini, a small coastal town in South Africa. 
The fault affected submarine cables serving the East and Southern Africa largely privately controlled Second and East Africa submarine system. In a monitoring group, Netbrox said Tanzania and the French island of Mayotte were the worst hit by the outrage. Tanzania Communications Regulatory Authority said it was working on an alternative route to reinstate connectivity to the country's major telecom networks while the recovery process of the deep sea cables was being addressed.